Okay, getting to the last few inputs now. Uh, next one, very, very useful, uh, reflection vector. So if we have a look at this sphere, it looks like a nice shiny reflection object. Um, we can see the offices, FX offices here, um, but we're not actually using um, reflections here. Um, this isn't the environment we're in. What we've done is we faked them using a cube map. So if we open this up, um, cube maps are a way of capturing an environment. Um, it captures six scenes, forwards, backwards, left, right, up and down. Uh, and in this case, it's being displayed as what's called a latitudinal, longitudinal cube map. Um, and so we can see really bad stretching here at the bottom, um, but we get some quite nice um, resolution around sort of the center. Um, we also can have this as, if I jump over to the internet, um, Google cube maps, you see them displayed like this as well. Uh, and so effectively it's taking six renders of an object or of a scene um, and then giving us that as well. So uh, it's a bit more wasteful to store them like this because you're wasting these texture spaces here um, versus a latitudinal longitudinal one. Um, wherever I can find one, there we go, that's a different way to, to, to store them. Uh, how the, the data is stored and used doesn't really matter as long as it's consistent. Um, and I believe there are material nodes within Unreal for doing conversions from one to the other. Um, if I just jump back over here, lat long to UV, UV to lat long. So um, if I do this as this, yeah, not entirely sure, haven't done this in a while, um, but there are ways to convert them. Um, so now we have a texture that is a representation of our scene. How do we use it? Well, that's where the reflection vector comes in. So um, it gives us the angle that the light would bounce off at from that point of the object. So for example, if I just bring this in, it's gonna give us this uh, result. If we visualize it, a bit difficult to see what's happening. Well, as the light comes from the camera here and bounces off there, that's the coordinate in our cube map um, that gives us the reflection. So here, looking at the sphere, I can see this building here with the four, three columns. If I look behind me, there's the building with the columns. Um, so there's actually buildings with columns on both sides, but hopefully you can see, um, see what I mean. So behind me here now are the cars. And if I turn the camera around, there they are over there. So it's using the cube map environment uh, to fake reflections. It's very, very cheap. Um, you can use the engine to capture cube maps. Uh, we might go into that at some point, uh, but basically you can create a cube map. I'm just going to do it exactly now. Scene capture cube. This is a camera. I could then assign a texture target, which I'm going to create a new one. Uh, let's just stick it here in there. I'll clean that up later. And there we are. We have a cube map capture of our scene uh, from a specific point. Um, if we want that to be static and not dynamic. If I find where it is on disk in the content browser, we can right click, create static texture, and now I have a, a saved environment. Um, and we're getting some nice banding and things in here, but, but that's how you can do that. Um, it's very cheap, as I say, very good approximation for reflections. Real time reflections are very expensive, games cannot really struggle with them uh, at the moment. but. Cube maps, very, very cheap. I've been using them for years. Anything that has slightly reflective, um, but also undulating surfaces, so things like water, this is perfect. Um, you wouldn't want to use real-time reflections on water because by the time everything's moved, it doesn't look very sort of very mirror-like anyway, depending on your water, obviously. Um, yeah, limitations of this are that it's from a very specific position. If our object is where the camera was captured, or the where the cube map was captured, it's going to look right. If our object here doesn't look too wrong, if our object is miles away, um, you're going to see some distortion and some some errors in the reflections. So um, just something to be aware of. But it's a very very cheap and easy way to set up um, reflections just using captured um, captured data rather than relying on um, on cube maps. No, rather than relying on reflections using cube maps. Um, one thing to note, I just deleted my scene capture. Um, scene capture actors are very expensive. Um, oh, 
can work. Scene capture 2D, scene capture cube. Um, it is re-rendering the scene, in this case because it's a cube, six times. Um, if we look at my frame rate, I'm at about 60. If I plug that in, I immediately drop to 24. So that is using a lot of performance to do this because it's a real-time capture. And this is only at 256 by 256. If I plug that up to 512, see what performance hit I get now, a little bit more. Um, so yeah, just make sure that if you are using scene capture cubes to create cube maps, make sure to delete them afterwards or disable capturing. So you can turn off capture on movement and capture on um, capture every frame. If you disable those, it's now never gonna capture. So just a word of warning to make sure to clean these up after they are done.